initial gel block for the uh, cast load 375 H&H &H hunting load that I used this year. Um, in the original block, this is the exit block, the second block, um, it did not have very much initial damage. It was very surprising. It's um, Through the original 16 inches, it created a, uh, a very uh, pistol round-like um, initial damage. Um, and even through the second block, it is like a what you'd appear, what you'd see in the first six inches of most handgun loads of permanent stretch cavity, except through all uh, 32 inches. It just kept on creating constant stretch cavity throughout, unlike uh, a faster, uh, softer bullet um, from a higher power rifle, which would have blown up the first block and then ended up in the second block. It just trucked right through both of them. Um, couldn't recover the bullet, it shot right through the rubber box, but uh, we know there was some expansion even without the bullet because there's a, you can tell there's quite a permanent stretch cavity through there. It tore some probably through energy, but also uh, the bullet probably expanded quite a bit. The hunting rifle used was an, a CZ American Safari 550, chambered in the venerable 375 Holland & Holland Magnum. Bullet was cast out of a mix of wheel weight alloy and recovered bullets to create a softer alloy for hunting. The <coughs> mold used was Lyman's 378674. Cast weight was 330 grains. This bullet is plain based and has a semi-round nose. The main purpose of this bullet is for black powder uh, match competition. Although Lyman does offer uh, other hunting bullets, and in fact I did cast some out of their mold 375449, I did not receive gas checks in time for testing or hunting season. Without the gas checks, they could not hold a group at 100 yards at high velocity necessary for hunting. I also attempted to use Lee's Plain Base 379-450RF, which was very accurate at lower velocities, and especially with pistol powder, but again could not hold groups at higher hunting velocities at 100 yards. So I settled on the match bullet from Lyman's heavier mold, larger mold, um, at best, it could hold a minute of angle at 100 yards from the bench rest under ideal conditions. After about four bullets, letting would become so severe from the, uh, from the softer alloy that uh, the group quickly would, by the end of 10 rounds, would expand out to about uh, five inches. But for hunting, three rounds at a minute of angle, of course, that's expecting the best, is good enough for our purposes. Although the bullet was not flat nosed, it was a semi round nose, so I figured with its weight and velocity that it would be adequate for the purpose. Cases were PPU, I used Winchester large rifle primers, and IMR 4198, 35 grains. Test velocities were 1,736 feet per second which was the velocity of the gel block test, 1,724, 1,687, 1,670, and 1,666. The velocity went down consistently <coughs> as rounds were fired and as the barrel leaded. Total penetration could not be calculated because the bullet could not be caught. I have used a hardwood dowel put through both wounds to show the trajectory of the hit. It was a very well placed shot and was done behind the shoulder at a very flat angle. Subject is a very large white tailed doe shot at approximately 70 to 80 yards. After being hit the animal ran for approximately 25 yards then dropped. When I caught up to it the animal still had the tenacity to lift its head at me and was quickly dispatched with a shot to the head. Upon field dressing, the pleural cavity was completely filled with blood. The abdominal cavity was relatively or perfectly clean and did not have 
any blood in it. In fact, it did not appear from the outside of the animal, from, its, from the wound around its fur, that it had bled outside of its body. You could not tell that, indicating most of the blood was within the animal and did not, uh, and I did not breach the pleural cavity. The pleural cavity was completely flooded with blood and incapacitation occurred due to a combination of severely damaged lungs as well as a pleural cavity filled with blood putting pressure on what was left of the lungs and the heart. Here we see on the skinned animal, the day later, the entry wound. The average size of this wound measured by my calipers to be about 3.8, which would be consistent with the rifle caliber 375. The bullet went through the top of the animal's lungs and missed its heart. By appearance, there was little to no hydrostatic shock, as both the heart and the lungs are intact. Via my calipers, and, by, uh, and a day late, of course, the entry wound into the beginning of the lung shot measures 451. But, of course, with tissue, and especially after shrinkage, these are approximates. Take them all with a grain of salt. Midway through, the holes in the lung, half after exiting one lung, and as it began to penetrate the rest of the lungs, the other lung began to measure 452. And by the time it exited the lungs on its way out, began to measure 0.6, approximately. The exit wound on the animal measured at most 70 caliber, or 0.7 inch, with a minimum of 6.5 inch by the rib. But of course, this was a jagged, torn wound on an animal a day after. So again, these are approximates. And you can see that there was quite a bit of damage on the exit. All of this proves that the bullet managed to expand. It certainly had, uh, with a well-placed shot, the ability to stop, drop an animal. However, the round did not have, did not create hydrostatic shock for the cleanest kill possible. Therefore, I somewhat judge this round to be a failure, but of course I'm, uh, I side very harshly on, uh, on clean kills as an ethical hunter, and my standards are very high. And of course this round did its job correctly. It's hard to criticize something that actually worked. The round did not create hydrostatic shock, but did manage to create decent expansion. When it comes to comparing the effects of a real animal shot and between the ballistics gel, we can see that there is some correlation. The damage seen within the deer with the delayed expansion, the lack of hydrostatic shock, but still the devastating wound, could be seen both in the deer and in the gel block. The gel block was actually shot after the deer, and it performed as expected, a long line of penetration without major stretch cavity. In this case, the gel block performed credibly in comparison to the real test in the real world. The results are also to be expected via the theory of how bullets should react as according to uh, someone in a laboratory. The bullet was of a soft metal alloy, but not as soft as pure lead. Therefore, the bullet should not be expected to expand like a jacketed soft point with suede lead core. Also, the velocity was around 1,700 feet per second. Not that slow, but not that fast to create proper hydrostatic shock. And the bullet shape of semi-round nose being inferior to a flat nose cast bullet designed specifically for hunting. Also the extreme penetration should be considered to be predictable because of the extreme sectional density of the bullet 
at 330 grains in a 375 caliber. 